did Yael originate from humans or humans originated from Yael? What is the relationship here? Well, the Yael are human beings, mm -hmm. somewhat different than that which is here on Earth. Mm -hmm. There are some variations of human beings on Earth, so it gets down to how you're defining what a human is. Um, so, Terrans, let's say from Terrans. Did Yael originate from Terrans or did Terrans originate from Yael? Who is whose ancestor? Those humans here on Earth are primarily, you could say, descendants of the Yael civilization. In a sense, and, in a timeline past, present, and future, the current Earth human civilization came after the Yael civilization. Excellent. At which point was that? Uh, was it during the time of before Atlantis, Lemuria, after Atlantis? When did the Yael? Uh, contributed their genetics to, to Earth humans? Well, it is more the idea that the civilization of the Yael had some who wanted to explore other regions of space in existence, left the Yael civilization, and then over thousands of years, they went and populated other systems inbred uh -huh. with other civilizations and created hybrid and hybridization and that has occurred in multiple regions and some of those then came back through to our current day earth and are then what we think of as some of the contributors to the earth human biology so there mm -hmm. is yayel dna in earth humans that has in a sense come from that movement through time of that original group that left the Yael civilization. Was, was that, it bef before destruction of Atlantis or after destruction oh, of well Atlantis? Oh, well before that, yeah. Well, well before, before that. that. Yeah. So were Atlanteans already descendants of Yael? You could say there have been other civilizations from extraterrestrial origin who have come to Earth and have interacted with human beings on Earth, and there have been hybridization programs from other extraterrestrial civilizations. Some of that would have been in the Atlantean time, the Lemurian time. Ah. So there is more than just one civilization at play here in terms of who came when and interacted with us. There are, there are several civilizations in, that, are, that are part of this uh, a part of our development. Are you comfortable naming them? Well, I'm not aware of all the names in that uh. sense. So the idea is the Yael contribution, the DNA that Earth humans have that is of the Yael origin, it is one of the most heart-centered, mm -hmm. most aware of our actual nature of existence they have a very deep understanding of the nature of existence and they express it in very heartfelt supportive ways and this then is something the current earth human population is most interested in as a from a collective you could say a super conscious level and that is perhaps the primary reason we are attracting them and they are being attracted to us as they being perhaps the first who will come here and meet with us in person. It is that Earth humans as a collective consciousness really want to move into a space more of the heart expression and experience and full and more full awareness of our actual nature. And so that is attracting us to the Yael civilization. They're very connected to that understanding and that way of life. And also again because their DNA is a part of our Earth human DNA. Uh, there are other extraterrestrial civilizations that are part of the Earth human DNA, but aren't necessarily as focused in the heart form of expression. They have other ways of expressing and interacting that aren't as attractive to the Earth human super conscious collective consciousness interests in terms of where Earth and humanity is moving in the future, in the near future. So those civilizations then won't necessarily be the first ones to have contact with us. The ones that aren't as heart-focused, aren't as heart-centered in their experiencing. Um, and so the other ones, to say that perhaps aren't as heart-centered, they are 
that, that which they are interested in, more focused in, is just as valid as what the Yael are focused in. It's just different. It's like a different type of music, a different type of experience. So because the super collective consciousness of Earth is most interested in most immediately going along a path and experiencing more of the heart-centered experience and the yah yell are more focused in that it is like attracting to one another and, and, and so that's one of the primary reasons the yah yell are most likely to be the first to come and interact with us is there do you know which genetics is most similar like which of the human races carry more of yah yell genetics that which is of the Yael contribution is very present in all Earth humans. Mm -hmm. What what star did they come from? What was the original star? <laughs> this is information that they won't bring through at this timing. Uh huh. Um, they are in a region that, if we were to send our telescopes there, we wouldn't pick them up yet because the dimension is somewhat out of focus at slightly different dimensionality, frequency. So for them to come here at this time, they do shift frequency out of that into be able to connect with us in the moments and times where they make obvious physical appearances and contact with us. Okay. But, but it is in this Milky Way, what I refer to as the Milky Way galaxy that they're mm -hmm. originating from. And they have more than one planet of origination. So mm -hmm. one of them, generally, they are born on this planet. And this particular planet is more the origin where they are born on the planet. The other one, frequently, they will be born off planet in which you, what we would think of as like the orbit of mm -hmm. this other planet. It's like being born in a spacecraft. Some are actually born on the surface of the second planet, just as some are born in a spacecraft in the orbit of the first planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess you already answered that question. Let me ask the next question. So there is, I would say, like a notion, more like a rumor that Jewish people, the original Jewish people, before the Exodus, they were Yael hybrids. Well, we are, all, we are all hybrids of Yael to an extent. Every Earth human has the Yael DNA, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. degree of it within their genetics. Okay. Shifting to the next question. Uh, thank you. Uh, the, the Zetas, what's the relationship, genetic relationship, origins gene, uh, relationship between the Zeta Grays and Yael? Are the Zetas the ancestors of Yael? The ones that come here generally are descendants of Yael, varying in what percentage of Yael genetics they have within them. It varies. So generally the, the Zeta that are coming and have come to Earth are, they're not Yael, descendants of Yael they are, but they are perhaps not even 50% of the Yael genetic structure. They are quite, there's some similarities, but they are quite different. Um, they're very removed from the heart nature, from the heart intelligence, the heart understanding, the heart way of expression. Mm -hmm. and, and because they lost so much of that was one of the primary reasons they came back into the reality of the Yael civilization knowing that they had one time been a part of the Ayel civilization, to be assisted in regaining more of their heart structure, more of their heart DNA and frequency and way of life. The Ayel could only do so much for them and provided them ideas and direction and information and support so that the Zetas could be successful in what they were trying to accomplish. And so then in that effort, they have come back to Earth, found themselves interacting with us to gather the information, the structures, the genetic information and material to help them make the transformations that they want to make. The Zetas generally interacting with Earth would be more like descendants of the Yael civilization, very different in many respects. 
mm-hmm. and very different interests and in they their their functions and interactions with earth humans is very different it's extremely unlikely that someone interacting with the, someone of the IL civilization is going to be frightened or in any way feel as though they have been invaded or their personal space has been violated it's extremely extremely unlikely of such a scenario where an earth human would experience that interacting with a yayo being that is let's say of the yayo civilization the yayo planets of current origin as more people share this information it will become clearer the distinction between zeta and yayel and many of the other extraterrestrial civilizations is that clear for you oh yes wonderful thank yeah. you okay um the appearance of the zetas and yayel and humans what's the difference how yayel are different from zetas and how yayel are different from earth humans well earth humans and yayel humans you could actually be walking amongst a crowd of blended mixed with both of them and you might not be able to tell the difference mm-hmm. the zetas that are uh, that I was just referring to you'll know it'll be very clear they're very different they they just they they appear alien they don't really appear human they are humanoid they have you know the head the arms the legs and and mm-hmm. and in that sense but generally the skin color is going to be very different they emanate a uh, different scent they move and behave differently the thought process is very generally going to be much more mental in general it's very different so there are variations in size and shapes of the zetas in my experience mm-hmm. and in my understanding so i can't just give an over a generalization of they're mm-hmm. all like this or they're all like that but it would be very obvious they, they don't you know they're very humanoid yes but it's just alien they they're very a very alien and again so the yayels could blend in in a crowd and you wouldn't really know that, that they're not an earth human some of the yayel a little more different and you might begin to wonder hey that looks like someone <laughs> might be from another planet I'm not sure i got to really look at them for a minute mm-hmm. yeah but as zeta it's like oh no i've never that's 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 from another world definitely okay um so what's different about the yell biology you would get more information talking to aishu about that but the primary difference at this time to really f- be aware of is their understanding of existence their connection and expression and co-creation together through the heart intelligence is very different than what earth humans are used to experiencing however the earth humans are very capable of living and expressing life in this way to a much much greater extent than we do today our biology and our ethereal bodies are very well equipped to pick up to learn and to adapt and to create an a heart intelligence spectrum much more similar to the how the yayel are equipped to do so if you wanted more specific differences biologically speaking you would really get more speaking directly to aisha or to some other yayel Thank you. Let me ask maybe you know do they give li- live births? They do? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh do you yell uh breastfeed their babies? I believe there is some of that, but I I can't say for sure. Uh-huh. Uh do the children grow up with parents in their family? Yes, and also in their community. There is the biological parents and then there is the that idea of the community as parents right uh-huh that confirms what i heard before uh when they are born uh do they remember their past lives well some of them are capable of living in a sense living what we think of as a past life while they're living their current life uh-huh uh, like cohabitating okay. incarnations the focus of attention travels in the both lives yes uh-huh. this this is something they're capable some of them will do this some of them have no interest in the past life experience some of them might be more focused in a future and current lifetime co-experience 
Some of them will have more than just two incarnations that they are living simultaneous. Uh, are they telepathic? They, they can communicate that way, yes. So was their preferential communication through voice or through telepathy? They tend to communicate with each other without speaking. Mm -hmm. They do at times communicate vocally through words and sounds. Mm -hmm. And they do interact with other life forms telepathically and also with sounds audibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. What do they wear? Generally, they're not going to wear anything. When they're in groups mm -hmm. with other civilizations, they'll wear a variety of um, close contact type material uh -huh. that they generally will either be something that they have received as a gift from some others and other civilizations in their meetings with them or it's something that's been developed through organic materials on their planet that they've crafted and created so it's materials that we don't have on this planet primarily similar to what you might think of as uh closest thing I can think of is it's more they're more it's more plant oriented I guess some of us are working with the idea of clothing created through hemp so what they work with in terms of clothing that comes from their planet is more going to be of organic source somewhat like a hemp plant uh-huh do they have hive mind higher mind hive hive oh a hive mind uh -huh. uh, they're capable of interacting together group consciously more more prominently than we are aware of doing Earth mm -hmm. humans definitely interact as, as a like a group mind you might think mm -hmm. of as a hive but mm -hmm. generally most of us aren't aware of it don't learn how to recognize that and don't see the behavior and how it impacts us every day but they're more aware of that and they'll do it more consciously and, and in that way because they're conscious of it they can work very effectively and uh, productively in supportively and enjoyably and fulfilling ways in that sense. And they're also very capable of having individualized experience as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Um, the hybridization program, I guess the question is, uh, were they part of hybridization program on Earth? In which hybridization program are you referring uh, more, to? More recently, last uh, 100 years, uh, maybe the less than 100, last 60 years, did they uh, run the hybridization program with humans hybridizing themselves and uh, Earth humans? Well, it's an ongoing interaction with, that they have with us and that we have with other extraterrestrial civilizations. Mm -hmm. We have this with each other. Uh, we, we have this with other forms of life on this planet. So, mm -hmm. the, so there's hybrid, hybridization occurring all the time amongst several different life forms. And they're mm -hmm. a part of that. All Earth human biology contains the Yael, contains various levels of Yael DNA. And mm -hmm. so just being in an Earth human body, you could say it's hybridized already with Yael DNA. Mm -hmm. DNA from other extraterrestrial civilizations as well. So, hybridization program, there are a variety of those with different focuses, different outcomes in mind. So, if you have a particular hybridization program that has a particular focus that you want to ask about, that might okay. get more specific. What uh, would be the specific qualities of a fresh Yale hybrid? Like, if you hybridize a modern Yael with a modern human and they produce an offspring. So the, the offspring will be having more of Yael genes. What psychological and other talents would be developed in a Yael hybrid on Earth? Well, that would be a Ya'u'ane. It's a Y-A-U-A-N-A-Y or N-E-Y. You can spell it either way. Ya'u. Ane. Yahuane. Yahuane. Uh huh. So that is something that they work with us, those of us who are at a level of heart consciousness, to facilitate the growth 
of the Yawane civilization. And what this is creating, the Yawane civilization, is quite astonishing for the Yael. And it is a wondrous civilization, the Yawane. They have aptitudes and levels of awareness and interactivity with other life forms that is, again, astonishing to even the Yael. So it's a fascinating development, the Yawane. And the Earth humans will begin to awaken to the awareness of the Yael civilization. And some of that will be through the presentation of some of the Yawane. It will be through the meeting, the presentation of some of the Yawane beings. And more often than not, they will be very, the younger, like children, Yawane. And it's a growth process. It is a process that is unfolding moment to moment. Even for the Yael, it is a, an unfolding, a growth, a birthing of this Yawane civilization that they find fascinating. And more people on earth are going to begin, as we become aware of the, Yael, of the Yael, then we'll become more aware of the Yawane and begin to experience and share in the development of the Yawane civilization. So, as an analogy, it's somewhat like a, ma, a mother and a father giving birth to a child and having the rich experience of raising the child and learning about the child, the personality of the child, and, and interacting and having the experience of growing and sharing life with the child. This is then the Yaoane is a civilization like this child, and in a sense... The Yael and Earth humans are like the parents, like a mother-father to the Yauane child. And so we will begin as the mother-father civilization to live and experience and nurture this child, this Yauane civilization. So <laughs> there is much to experience and share and enjoy in this unfoldment and learning process together as parents and as the child, as, as this new civilization, will learn about us, will learn about the parents. Just as our children learn about their parents growing up, the Yaoani will learn about the Yael and the Earth human civilization as they grow up. Wonderful. So, what would be the psychological qualities of um, Yaoani? <laughs> How are different from Earth humans? What uh, so are they four dimensional? Are they are they higher dimensional? Well, they're more expansive dimensionally in terms of their awareness mm -hmm. and ability to interact and connect and share on more than more dimensions they can be on at one time. Mm -hmm. Interact and connect to another person on more dimensions at one time. Mm -hmm. So they're more expansive dimensionality in that sense. And so to really learn about the psychological differences, one of the richest and most informing ways is to talk with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that experience, learning how they are different, you interact and experience the difference that they are in a sense. You have, in that sense, experienced the different psychology of them by sharing time with them, talking with mm -hmm. them, walking mm -hmm. with them, playing with them, learning with them. But you could say they're not going to get into a analysis with you, most likely. They're not going to talk facts and figures with you. Those typically are not going to be the primary focus, generally speaking. It's, it's very... Let's say if you have the idea when you're laughing and you're just in a deep, rich state of laughter or even just a very 
rich feeling of joyful tears. You're in that state where you're feeling such joy in a moment that tears are rolling out of your eyes or gradually rolling down your face. That feeling is more the psychology of the Yauane. And it's more the Yael too, but very much more the Yauane psychology. Interacting with them, you begin to feel that type of joy that brings tears to your eyes. That it's the type of psychology you feel when you're laughing and laughing and you feel so good inside. So that is more the psychology, what they are like interacting with them. And that might seem like an unusual answer, but again, mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. talking about an extraterrestrial civilization. They're very different in many respects in terms of how they experience and what psychology is to them. So you could say the books that we have on psychology can remain on the bookshelf for the most mm -hmm. part. And we can open up to learning a whole new psychology through interacting with Yael and Yauane civilization. Mm -hmm. It will rewrite books. Books won't even be necessary it becomes experiential and retained information. The psychology that is in part of Yauane and Yael civilization. One will not need to write a book. It will be retained experiential knowledge that one that Earth humans will have in that sense. So we won't really need classrooms to educate our young ones about the Yauane and the Yael and what they're like. It will be information that will be retained within our Earth human biology. Our DNA will know who they are in that sense. Mm -hmm. Could a Yael be angry? This is <laughs> highly unlikely. Uh, mm -hmm. But I can't say that it hasn't happened or won't happen. In, in my experience and from what I, my understanding is, it's highly unlikely, highly improbable, but I wouldn't say impossible. Uh, could the Yael be panicky? This just doesn't resonate with okay. their experience. Fear is not something that resonates with the Yael. Uh-huh. Uh, when they approach a task, would they do a lot of intellectual, logical research? In my experience, generally that isn't necessary. If it's useful mm -hmm. for them, they'll access it within the knowledge banks contained within their DNA and their ability to tune into that knowledge contained into the source of the information they're interested in at that moment. So. I get it. Thank you. Uh, I also heard about Pleiel civilization, uh, that it would be a hybrid between Pleiadians and Yael. Do, do you know any of the, about, that, about them? I haven't had much interaction consciously with them, so I don't uh -huh. have much that I can say. Aishua may have more information. So what is their involvement um, with current uh, human civilization? Uh, what um, uh, There was uh, an event which is Phoenix, Phoenix Lights, I think it was called, when uh, Yael ships passed over Phoenix, right? Yeah. In 1999? Yes. C can you mention more? Can you tell a little more about it? This was, for many reasons, experiential for them was one of the reasons that they did this. Another reason they were attracted to us because our consciousness was ready for it and they wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to learn about where we were being in an opportunity to see their presence in the way they revealed themselves, to learn about our readiness, willingness, openness, to accept, to consider that they are real. The sightings in 1997, the ones, let's say, the governor of Arizona at the time saw and spoke about on CNN, those particular sighting contacts, the imagery, the lights, isn't just a light that they use for navigating or just a light that they turn on 
so that we can see that there is something there. There is consciousness they convey through the medium of the light. It is somewhat like a light ship, in a sense. And they conveyed a variety of ideas and information through the light. Therein those who are viewing this at the time and who view it on video current day or in the future can receive the information and were receiving on that day the information to various degrees the information being shared through the lights and they then observe how many people are picking up this conscious this communication the message the gift the asking they are able to observe to a fairly accurate degree the earth humans that are seeing this how much information the earth human is getting are they responding in a favorable way or is the earth human withdrawing from the information are they repressing it are they frightened of it or are they more open to it and do they then in a position to connect more in the future with the yayo so they're gauging quite a few different characteristics and it's an experience of learning for them on other ways other levels as well so that is one of the ideas of what was going on in that particular contact sighting in 1997 throughout you know the Arizona region some of the surrounding states mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah, it's been very valuable for them. It was very effective. They're very pleased, in a sense. It's a very favorable outcome, that visual sighting contact that took place at that time. It's brought us, the two civilizations, closer, and it has progressed the development of Earth humans' consciousness terms like a historical marker it has advanced and accelerated earth humans consciousness to be more open to the type of extraterrestrial civilization that the Yael are and represent the idea of a very open loving supportive civilization that the Yael are uh, yeah it's it's been a very it was it was a very powerfully positive uh, contact sighting that took place at that time how do you see the first contact happening what's your idea what would be the first open official official open contact what would be the scenario do you have any idea yeah, about that we talked about that quite a bit nice we talked and some of the other yaw yells that i was channeling spoke quite a bit about that in my uh, tour through europe back in june and july where i was in mm -hmm. like, i was in holland in uh, germany and austria there are a variety of ways that it can begin to occur and unfold. And in June and July of last year, the information that Aisha and the Yael were bringing through, through me, because of course there are other channels of the Yael civilization, I'm certainly not the only one. At that time, most likely unfolding would be people on earth to a very large percentage would be aware that this was going to happen would be very aware of why and very aware of how and very aware of who this was going to occur with who the Yael were it was going to be and so the idea is as more of earth humanity awakens to the awareness of the extraterrestrial and other similar type of extraterrestrial civilizations the more it opens up the earth human dna to receive the communications from the yayel of when this is going to occur how it's going to unfold where basically the most likely scenario as of June and July of 2016 that they were sharing would be that it would occur and unfold in many different locations 
Mm -hmm. It would be more often out in the countrysides, Mm -hmm. and people would be more moved to travel to these event locations, move out of the city, travel, just like get in the car and drive out, whether it's a half hour or an hour or two out from cities, out into country locations, where they'd simply feel, know that this event contact is going to occur. So multiple locations around the world, fairly simultaneous, occurring most simultaneously in a sense, and that that would be occurring in such a way that the validation, the reality that this is a reality, begins to unfold in a person's knowing that this is real. So that people won't be looking to the television or to the media or to their leaders to ask, is this real or not? People will simply begin to realize realize and really know this is real. These are truly Mm -hmm. of extraterrestrial origin. They're part of our family. To such an extent that the people on Earth not needing to ask or look outside themselves for verification or validation or confirmation... Beyond that, the people will even know who the people will be. There will be contact. Who will be arriving? Who the extraterrestrials? Who the Yael are? Very specifically, who they are. Mm-hmm. A very personal relationship with. Like, let's say you learn that you have a twin that you didn't know you had, and tomorrow you're going to have a meeting with that twin. It's been arranged. And you're going to meet at such and such location at such and such time. You just go there with this excitement. You're going to meet a twin that your parents hadn't told you about for some reason. So there is some of this knowingness and excitement and that level of connectivity that exists between us and these Yael who will be most likely making these contacts in physical form. And this takes place therein in a very comforting way a very exciting way for the Yael and for those on earth who are going and uh, to these sites to have the contact unfold for them in this way there will be others on earth who will be excited about it but won't feel drawn to the, lo- the, the arrival locations, to the meeting contact points. And, and there are some, certainly other scenarios too. So it, it's a very, the idea when earth humans are ready and know this is going to happen, comfortable, excited about it, realize that this is family, like it's a twin that I haven't known I had all this time, in a sense. So there is that level of knowing and excitement and and familiarity that when enough humans are at that place therein, it is more likely that this will begin actually taking place in our Earth-human timeline of the idea of past, present, and future. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. It it makes me want to cry. Okay. Um, So do I yell now what? cry, Cry in a joyful way? (laughs) <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I can yes. feel it. Uh, yeah. Um, do Yael uh, currently walking on our streets and uh, meeting humans it secretly? Happens, in my understanding, it happens at times, but it isn't all that frequent. There uh-huh. are some who have some residents here and there in various mm-hmm. ways and interact with us in various capacities at times in the physical um, I'm not aware of all the different ways that is occurring, um, but I, my understanding is it does occur and is occurring in various ways at various times, with the full agreement of the people that this is taking place with, uh, and it's not being done in an invasive way. It's it's not in that sense uh, against anybody's will who is having these interactions, any Earth humans that are having these interactions, whether they are aware or not that they are interacting with a Yael human. Uh, so you would say if they are agreeing on a deeper level of their consciousness, if they're not aware they are having an interaction. There are some Earth humans who are aware they are having interactions with Yael humans on Earth at various times. 
and I, I'm certainly not aware of all of those that are taking place. Have you met any Yale physically? Not in the way I would meet you if you walked in the room in this moment. Not at that level of uh, conscious awareness. I, I have met them in the physical, but it was on a dimension more of their frequency. And, uh -huh. and, and, and I'm not at this moment in that frequency, so I can't recall it. I don't remember it. Uh -huh. um, I, I have seen the, uh, some of the spacecraft. I've seen Aishwa spacecraft. And <laughs> it's just an amazing, an amazing experience. And, uh, I have never seen any sp any 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 UFOs, any spacecrafts. Okay. I want to. I want to. I, okay. I'm eager. Okay. Please show. Please tell them to <laughs> ask them to to show to me. I you know. Right. Take me now. <laughs> uh, tonight I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. They're listening. When the timing is perfectly appropriate, it will occur and unfold for you. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, when I saw the craft, I didn't know who it was. And it was like unlike any spacecraft I've ever seen before. I haven't seen it on TV or on video or on the Internet or in books or in a movie. Never seen anything like it. And it was a very long, you know, I had like a, almost probably a full 10 seconds in daylight. And, and uh, yeah, it was astounding. And I'm learning more and more about what took place in that contact because in reality, it wasn't just me watching. Um, there was a lot going on and uh, consciousness being shared and interacted between the intelligence aboard the spacecraft. And uh, Aishwa was one of the beings on that spacecraft. It was several months later when I was doing a, a life channeling of Aishwa in um, Vancouver, BC, Canada. One of the uh, person attending asked Aishwa, what's a normal day like in your life? And then Aishwa started <laughs> talking about flying over Maui and uh, discovering that I was seeing his spacecraft. And he, uh -huh. he wasn't aware of that at the moment it occurred. Uh, he was involved and focused on some other things. But he was later, he was, it was revealed to him by some of the other Yael that I saw that saw him flying over and so that's, that's how I learned that that spacecraft was his, through several months later, someone uh -huh. at a yaw yell at a channeling event asking Aishwa that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's an amazing experience. I'm learning more about that sighting almost on a daily basis. <laughs> is Aishwa your higher self? Well, in a sense, he is me on a timeline, another incarnation. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So... Yeah, I, I exist in the Yael civilization as Aishua. But I am getting on in time here with my uh, day right, and my schedule. Right, right, right. Thank you very much. I <laughs> I appreciate so much your um, your answers. It is great to have many, so many confirmations and such a, such a contact. Um, you are a legend for us. We were eager to meet, and uh, it's nice that uh, finally we met. And... Um, um, thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you, Max. Yeah, and reaching out to me that you uh, would, would enjoy having this time together. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wonderful. And uh, yeah, I feel the love from you and uh, perhaps from those that you interact with or sharing your love for me. And uh, I certainly feel Aishwa, some of the Yael's love in our interaction, you and me talking here today. So. May that, may that joy and that love that we're sharing together find those who perhaps have access to this information at some point in the future.